Welcome to our lecture online and now we're going to look at the fourth of the four Maxwell's equations in differential form. And of course, this one is Faraday's law and Faraday's law is also known as Faraday's law of induction, which has to do with a change in magnetic field induces a voltage which induces a current and then so forth and so on. So let's find out what this is all about. But first, here's the differential form of the equation where we can say that the curl of the electric field is equal to the negative of the changing of the B field with respect to time and the change in the magnetic field with respect to time. What does that even mean? Well, just for reference also, here is the integral form of the equation where we can say that the line integral of the electric field around a loop or around any kind of curve is equal to the negative of the uh, changing uh, magnetic flux with respect to time. Of course, we have to remember what magnetic flux is. By definition, the magnetic flux uh, is equal to the strength of the B field times the area through which it goes. So, um, and through which it goes is probably not a good term because B field doesn't go anywhere, it just exists, it's there. But if we take a, an area and we know how much B field flux goes through that area, then uh, we can calculate what we call the magnetic flux. So here's an example of what that might look like. Let's say there's a, a magnetic field present and we draw an imaginary circle around that magnetic field and the circle, the plane of the circle is of course perpendicular to the magnetic field. So here's the plane of the circle, magnetic field goes like this and so we can say that there's going to be an electric field present in a circular form like that if the B field, if the magnetic field is changing, only if it's changing, that's the key here, only if the B field is changing. If the B field is there, static, not changing at all, there will not be an electric field. But if for some reason the B field is increasing, meaning more and more flux is, is exists in that region, or the B field is decreasing, less and less flux exists in that region, what happens then is there will be the presence of an electric field in a circular form kind of like a B field around a current, there will be an electric field around a changing magnetic field, which is really interesting. So there doesn't need to be anything there, there doesn't need to be a wire or a conductor or anything like that. So simply, there's a region where there's a magnetic field and when it changes there will be an electric field present that is circular in nature. Of course, whenever we think of a, a magnetic, uh, electric field, a magnetic field which is circular, that's, um, of course, electric field, magnetic fields are vectors. Circular means we can think about the curl, and that's why this form is so interesting. Here we can say that the curl of the electric field is equal to the negative of the partial derivative with respect to time of the B field. That's a lot of words and hard to say sometimes. So it all has to do with if the B field is changing, there will be an electric field, and we can define it like this. So let's try to define it. Let's try to figure out what that really means. So, this means the curl of the electric field. So the del operator crossing with the electric field, we get the curl of the electric field, and by definition the curl is the circulation divided by the area. And if you remember what we mean by the circulation, it's simply the strength of the E field, and if we have a nice circle right here and the B field is uniform, the strength of the E field will be the same everywhere around that circle region, so we can say that it's equal to the strength of the E field, times the distance around that circle, and that would be 2 pi times the radius, because it's a circular region. And if we divide that by the area, which is pi r squared, we get the negative of the changing B field with respect to time. Hmm, very interesting. So now, what happens if we take this and we move it to the other side of the equation? So let's do that, so we get the electric field times uh, 2 pi r, is equal to minus the changing with respect to time of the B field times the area, pi r squared. And remember, the B field times the area is equal to the flux. So we can say that this really equal to the flux. So we can say the electric field times 2 pi r is equal to the flux minus the changing flux of the B field with respect to time. Now, E times 2 pi r, the strength of the electric field times the distance as we go around the circle. Now let's go back to something we might be familiar with, which is a capacitor, set of capacitor plates with some charge on each side on each of the plates, and we have an electric field in this case from positive to negative. Well, it's always from positive to negative, but here the positive is on the left side, the negative is on the right side. And let's say the capacitor plates are a distance d apart from one another. Then we can say that the electric field strength here is equal to the voltage between the plates divided by the distance between the plates. Or we can say that the voltage between the plates, the, dif the potential difference from one plate to the other, is equal to the strength of the E field 
times the distance between the plates. Now let's go look at that right here, this thing right here, and let's take a look at what we have over here. Here we have electric field strength times distance. 2 pi r is the distance around the circle. So electric field strength times distance is equal to, you guessed it, potential difference. So in other words, what happens is, even though there's no batteries or no ch charges or anything like that, simply the fact that the B field, the magnetic field here is changing, it sets up an electric field which acts like uh, what we call an EMF, an electromotive force, a potential difference. There's no wires there, there's no conductors, nothing, but it acts as if there's a potential difference going around the circle, and so one loop around the circle gives you a total potential difference of the strength of the electric field times the distance, the path around the circle. So this can be written as V, the potential difference, is equal to minus the partial derivative with respect to time of the flux of the B field, like that. Now, of course, you have to be a little careful here. You can't really have a potential difference because there's no conductors there, there's no wires there. There's, there's, it's hard to imagine what that would be like. But now imagine if we put a real conductor there. What happens if we now actually put a copper wire all the way around that B field like that? Now what happens? Well, that copper wire will feel that electric field, which will basically set up a potential difference within the wire not caused by any batteries or anything like that, but it's as if there is a battery there, which will then push charge through the current, uh, through the wire. So what happens then is you now would have a current flowing around the wire as long as the B field is changing. Now we got to be careful about the orientation of the B field. Because we're saying changing, them, but it means that the B field can be increasing or the B field can be decreasing. If the B field is increasing, then the current will actually go in the opposite direction. That's what the negative actually stands for. The negative here means that it will be in the opposite direction of the electric field if the electric field is increasing. However, if the, electric, if the B field is decreasing, then the electric field will actually be oriented in the opposite, in this direction. So if it's decreasing, if the B field is decreasing, then, let's see, yeah, then we'll have the electric field in this direction. If the B field is increasing, we'll have the electric field going in the opposite direction. So we have to be careful about that. That's what the negative is for. The negative indicates that the direction of the E field is opposite to whether or not the B field is increasing or decreasing. All right, so that's really what this equation represents. It represents that there's an electric field present if there's a magnetic field that is changing. The electric field will be circular in shape, and because it's circular in shape, we can then take the curl of that, the curl by definition is the circulation divided by the area. The circulation is the strength of the electric field times the distance around the circle. We divide that by the area. If we then take the area to the other side, we then realize that B field times the area is really the magnetic flux, which is what we find in Faraday's law right there. And on the left side, the E field times distance basically is equal to potential difference or voltage. And so now we can see that if you place a conductor there, that potential difference, that voltage, that electric field will cause a current to flow through the wire as long as the field is changing. If the field is increasing, then it will be in the opposite direction. If the field is decreasing, it will be in this direction, and that is then indicated by the negative sign over there. And so there you, are, there you go, a really nice way of representing Faraday's law, which is therefore the fourth equation in the set of the four Maxwell's equations in differential form.